this is what we're come to. The next stage after this is they're going to be pipelines blown up. Radical environmentalists see humanity as some sort of plague beset upon the earth to be destroyed instead of the crowning creation of God to add to his earth, to complete the earth, man, then woman. Here, though, is the abominable creation of the CBC, Dr. David Suzuki, who is a fruit fly geneticist and not a climate scientist by any means, talking to reporters at an Extinction Rebellion protest on Vancouver Island. Listen to this. In deep, deep doo-doo, and they've been telling us, the leading experts, for over 40 years. This is what we're come to. The next stage after this is there are going to be pipelines blown up if our leaders don't pay attention to what's going on. The next stage after this is there are going to be pipelines blown up. Now that's madness, threatening bombings. But it's also not far-fetched, and I'll get to that in a second. But first, here is Alberta Environment Minister Jason Nixon absolutely laying waste to Suzuki in the legislature on Monday afternoon. Take a listen. David Suzuki is so out of touch with the real world that he advocates Mr. Spico for eco-terrorism towards Canadian people and industries. This is completely unacceptable and extremely reckless. The NDP, Mr. Speaker, sadly have a long history of collaborating with David Suzuki and their silence on, this outra on his outrageous comments make them complicit with calls for eco-terrorism towards Albertans and Canadians. And in case you think that a bombing as eco-terrorism is just so outrageous that it could never, never possibly happen in real life, at least here in Alberta where I am, and that Suzuki was just using hyperbole, well, let me refer you to the story of Weibo Ludwig. The story itself is surrounded by controversy, but Weibo Ludwig was a reformed religious leader. Some might call him a cult leader in the peace country in Alberta around the late 1980s and 1990s. He was the patriarch of Trickle Creek Compound, who accused the oil industry of poisoning his family, um, poisoning his livestock, causing stillbirths in his family and his livestock. And ultimately, he was convicted of several crimes. Again, that came with a lot of controversy around how those convictions came to be. But Ludwig was held responsible for bombings and vandalisms of oil field sites in and around Hythe, Alberta, and the rest of the peace country. Now, whether or not you think Weibo Ludwig did it or that he was framed, the point remains that he was convicted and, moreover, that the vandalism and bombings happened. The eco-terrorism bombings happened here in Alberta. So it's not some far-fetched conspiracy theory that this violence that Suzuki's threatening, that it might happen again. It has happened, and for many of us, like me, old enough to remember... We were scared for our brothers and for our dads when they went away to work, and that fear lasted for a very long time. Violence along with death and incarceration for unbelievers, though, these are mantras the radical left recycles to suit whatever crisis they have right in front of them. The crisis that they plan to capitalize on to use to control your life, how you live it, how you manage your home, who your friends are and how often you see them. For example, if you think that letting people die of COVID without care or treatment, if they decided to go unvaxxed, if they didn't, you know, follow the radical left's centralized government control plan for your health, if you think that's new, it's not. It's exactly what the environmental left has wanted to do to you for decades around climate change. They say the earth needs fewer people, as though these people even know how many other people the earth can support. But they don't actually mean fewer of the people who think just like them. They mean fewer of us, of me and you, the unnecessary eaters and breeders and consumers of the things they think should be exclusively reserved for their use. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.